Mako Ping Trophy Race Up Deutsche Tep 2018. Great race, absolutely love the idea of this. Uh, so you can see, here we go, rolling out. Got Jason to the left of me. We also have Paul in the race, uh, and we're just cruising. So this is the open mail, so any, any bloke can do this race. Uh, it was about a 12K climb, I believe, because we went a little bit past the Deutsche Tep segment. Uh, and it was good. So anyway, Paul decides to get to the front and just absolutely launch it. I'm just sitting behind Jason, uh, and then he's just sort of like, uh, I think, I'll, I think I don't want to follow Paul. Then this bloke, uh, who's we've seen in a couple other videos, he does the odd Starbucks group ride, fast bloke on the flat. Wanted to see how well he went on the climb, so anyway, I hopped on his wheel, and it was pretty good pace. So anyway, you can see we're just turning up to the Deutsche Tep segment as we go now, just under that little archway. Uh, and here we go. Paul's absolutely launching it, just trying to drop as many people as possible, uh, which is pretty good. Pretty good tactic, that's what we sort of talked about before. He was like, I'm just gonna, just gonna absolutely launch it. Uh, so you can see already, people looking pretty panicked. Uh, I was check, checking the shoulder and just, just saw chaos behind me. A lot of people getting dropped already. And we we're only, what, 400 meters into the race. Um, just because this sort of pace, like, we really did launch it at the very beginning, sort of over six watts per kilo, sometimes over seven watts per kilo. Not many people can hold that really uh, for a, a continuous amount of time. Uh, so you can see here, this guy already is out the saddle, looking like he's, uh, He's looking not too uncomfortable, to be honest. Uh, and I was, I was feeling like I was hurting, but I was like, yeah, it's pretty cash. Um, I just hope we don't keep this pace up the whole way, but I think if we did, we would have got sub 25 probably or something, or like KOM time, because uh, this, is, this is pretty pretty fast. Uh, but anyway, we can see we've got a bit of police motor, motorbike escort on the right-hand side of the road. He was sawing, sawing everyone out for us, which is good. Uh, the road wasn't closed, but it was so early. It was like, what, 6.30 a.m. or something? No, 7 a.m. when I think we started, more or less. So it was good. Uh, not too much traffic on the road. Uh, not too hot. That was very good, actually. Uh, pretty cool. Uh, you can see it's a bit overcast. Uh, sorry about the little blotch on my lens. I didn't. I should have cleaned it. Sorry about that. Um, but yeah, it was it was good actually. Day. If it was too hot, I don't think I could have pushed as hard. I, I generally find the heat here affects me a decent amount. Uh, but yeah, you can see now we're going three percent, twenty-seven k now. You get a good draft on this climb. It's six percent average, and like I'm not gonna lie, a draft on this is this is pretty insane. Uh, I'd say it probably saved me maybe ten to fifteen watts today. Maybe a little, yeah, probably about 10, 15 watts, maybe, um, just because of the draft. Because even I feel like if you're going slowly, like, just having someone block the wind uh, is just pretty good. I mean, it's not too windy here, so it's probably not as big as some places. Like, if you had a block headwind, even when you're going real steep gradients, it definitely helps. You can see we're just going up for, through the first kilometer or so. These people on the left just going out for a nice Sunday bike ride, probably wondering what the hell... All these blokes are doing, just absolutely launching on the front. Uh, but anyway, the so for Deutsche Tap segment, it's about 10, 10 and a half kilometers. Uh, so this one is slightly, slightly past it. Uh, it started slightly before, ended slightly afterwards. And the KOM is about 25 minutes. Uh, and top 10 is 29, 28, no, 28, 35 or something. I think I'm top 10 now. 28, 35, which is pretty pretty content with that. Uh, I'll try and drop that by a minute or so. That'll be, that'll, that's, the, that's the goal. And we'll see if we can. So you can see here, Paul's just... Just on these little steep parts, he just sort of attacks a little bit more, just trying to see if anyone can follow. Because in reality, if you set an even tempo, it's not, okay, it's, it's still hard, but it's not that hard to follow um, if you've got a bit of fitness um, for the first maybe 10, 15 minutes, just because it's like you get a good drop. If, when you do those little surges and suddenly bring it above threshold, people find it really hard to do that and recover. So if you're below threshold when you're doing it, then it's fine. So you can see here we're getting below like 300 watts sometimes just because the draft is pretty good here. Um, and when this, the thing with Deutsche Tep is like, if it was complete straight, the draft would obviously be better. But around these corners, obviously there's accelerations, the draft isn't perfect. And for sure it's not, um, it's not like a hunt, like the best drafting uh, when you're going around corners and things like that. But you can see always after the corner, you sort of have to surge through the corner and after the corner, often you carry more momentum onto the wheel and you don't really have to do that much work. Anyway, Paul decides that he's gonna just get a, just, you know, chuck it up a little bit. He's just looking back, seeing what this guy, this guy you can see suddenly, he suddenly like sprints to surge across. I'm like, all right, I'll, I'll sprint to get across as well. Uh, and then you can see that that's it, game over for the man. He then sprints again, and I'm like, yeah, if you're sprinting like this, mate, you're not gonna, you're not gonna be able to close that gap. So anyway, he then gestures for me to come through pretty soon, I think just about now. I'm like, yeah, cheers, mate, I'm, uh, I'm not gonna help you. So I try and just, not like do a full gas sprint, but just try and whip it up a little bit so he has to surge, so I don't just like come past him at even tempo. And now I'm onto Paul's wheel, and I'm like, all right, this is good. Just gonna hold your wheel, and uh, we'll see how we go. So the guy behind me is now struggling. I sort of have a little check back here or there, um, and around this corner, I'm pretty sure he, the poor man gets dropped. And it's just us, me and Paul on the front. Uh, well, Paul's on the front. I do pretty much zero turns on the front. Uh, but anyway, <laughs> it's all good. Uh, so you can see, we like, it's it's good. He's looking around. I think he knows. All right, everyone's gone. 
we've got it in the bag, and uh, you can see Paul is Paul is putting some big some big efforts in when he gets out of the saddle. He likes to test and test you when you're on the wheel, but he's a good draft. He's a he's a very good draft because he's a lot taller than me. So anyway, skip ahead a little bit to now to 4.6 kilometers to go, um, and we just this guy has, thinks that he's as fast as us, so he just sort of has a little tempo. A little, little effort on the left-hand side of the road, but I think he quickly realizes that uh, it's game over and he's not going to be able to hold this pace for the whole climb, uh, which is good. This bit is when it's actually pretty steep, um, which, uh, not pretty steep, pretty straight, sorry, and not that steep, so you get a good draft up here. <clears throat> you can see the watts are pretty variable, just because obviously when you're in the wheel, there's always the little accelerations uh, that you wouldn't necessarily have if you were uh, riding solo, just like trying to hold a number. Uh, but the draft is so good. You can see Paul's wob bobbing a little bit. Uh, not too bad, but he keeps it pretty pretty smooth on the bike. Nice high cadence. My cadence on this ride was like 87 or something. I was like, wow, it was pretty high. And that includes like the end part where obviously like it's a little bit steep, so obviously your cadence wouldn't be as good. I think on this ladder part, it's probably averaging like 90, 95, which for me is like <laughs> real high cadence. Um, but yeah, I'm trying to work on that and actually just not... Uh, not like do the 85 cadence, which is what I found generally worked a little bit better before, but I'm trying to, you know, up it a little bit. Because uh, I definitely do like know when I can, when I have a high cadence, it definitely does feel a little bit easier, but you just really have to train it. Um, but anyway, you can see it's just a good climb, this. Like, it's just, it's like, it's weird because it is variable, but only like a very small range. So it only really goes from 6% to maybe plus or minus 2% for most of it. So 8% maybe, sometimes 10, but not really that much. And then maybe it doesn't really get below 3% apart from, there are two just extremes. There's one bit where it gets sort of 11, 12% for a decent amount of time at the very end. And there's also a bit where it's downhill. So apart from those, it's pretty, it's pretty consistent, but always sort of slightly changing around the corners. It'll be a little bit steeper then into the corners. It's always a little bit um, shallower. You can see here on this bit, Paul's really trying to get as error as possible. Uh, and I'm getting a good draft, I'm getting 28k an hour, which is always, always a good draft. You see around that corner, the watts were dropping down to 220 watts. Uh, and it was a real good race. Like, I mean, to be honest, I was surprised that more people couldn't follow the wheel. But anyway, Paul's just on the front, absolutely drilling it. Everyone else has been well dropped by now. So I'm pretty, pretty confident uh, that I'll be able to get the W because <laughs> in actual fact, Paul isn't really in the race. Like he's, he's just being the pacemaker, basically. I mean, it's sort of cheating. I know people are going to be in comps with, me, me, me. but like in reality, at the same time, I could have done this on my own. I just would have been maybe a minute slower, maybe, maybe a little bit, maybe more. Um, if I hadn't have had Paul on the front, like I could have done it, but it's just having him is just like, it's sort of better in some ways because it means that everyone has just like got the target of just holding that wheel. There's no tactics or anything. Uh, obviously like some people like the tactics, some people don't, but it makes it like a hard race anyway. So Paul is still just like, it's basically just being my lead out man. It was pretty good. Like, I, was, I was quite happy. I mean, it's sort of ironic when you've got a lead out man who's faster than you, but anyway, we'll, we'll ignore that point and just just concentrate on uh, on holding the wheel. Like I didn't really find it was mega hard this. Like obviously it was hard, but it wasn't as in I was like absolutely dying until real, really the last part. Like on the wheel I felt comfortable. I was just like trying to be as relaxed as possible and just like, again, what I was saying before, just concentrate on the effort, just gears, hold the wheel. That's pretty much it. And the time seems to fly a lot more, like a lot faster when you're on someone's wheel. Uh, because I think you just have more going in your mind and like you're not just concentrating on the effort. I feel like sometimes when you're just concentrating on the effort, sometimes the time flies by when you're going good, but other times it doesn't. So you can see here, we're now on a bit of a, a downhill part, slash flat, only four, three percent. Um, and Paul now decides that he's, uh, he's done his turn and it's up to me. Uh, but actually, um, you can see here, I don't know sure what happened to that. I'd like drop the wheel or something, but Paul quickly decides that he's, uh, he's done his turn. He's gonna sit on my wheel for a bit, which is fair play, because the lad has dragged me about 90% of the way up this climb. Um, but you can see I'm out of the saddle here. I did a bit out of the saddle stuff, but he's like, come on mate, pull a turn. I'm like, all right, fair play. Um, but I, was, I didn't realize how cooked I was until I was like trying to pull a turn and I was like, oh my God, my legs are gone. But it's weird because I feel like they can't be that gone because you've just been holding like 320, 330 watts for that whole time, but it just was, just, just was like, I just was like, oh, well, there you go. You can see out this corner, I try and spike it up a little bit and I'm just like, yeah, hold 400 up here. And I was like, nope, <laughs> nope, that cannot be done. Uh, and I just settled back down to like 330 and I just like, this bit here, like my cadence was just dreadful and like, I was giving everything, but the power just wasn't coming out. But I know I could do that. It's like, it's, it's weird. Like, I knew if I like, I just know, concentrated, clicked down the gears a bit more and had a better cadence, like, I probably could have done the, done the effort and just concentrated a bit more. Here I was like running to the bush. I'm not sure what I'm doing there. Uh, but it was weird. I just couldn't really like actually output the energy. Like I felt like I was outputting loads of energy, but then you look down at the numbers and you're just like, um, what? Uh -huh. But anyway, here I'm just trying to hold 330, but you can see I'm going down like 280, 290. Uh, which was not ideal. Um, so I'm really just now trying to 
just empty the tank because I know I've won it. Like, I mean, I, I knew I won it pretty much like maybe five, ten minutes in, like, because I just looked back and saw the gap and I was like, even if I get dropped, I'll still be able to hold a, like a better tempo than they, those guys. Um, I think the people who came third and uh, second and third, they did Doi Satep in 31 minutes and I think we did in like 28 or something. So, uh, yeah, it was like a good good margin. Um, a large part of that is Paul because of the because of the draft and I think for sure six percent gradient massive draft seven percent yeah I think until you really get over like well speed like speed is the important thing not gradient when you get under 16k an hour 15k an hour I think that's when the draft becomes a lot less of it less of an issue but over that for sure you get a get a decent draft anyway here is the segment uh but obviously we're not racing the segment it was quite good actually because I, I thought they just have it here but they said it was like too dangerous because obviously there's a lot of traffic, so they have it just around the corner on like a sort of quiet road, uh, which is a good idea, and it covers the whole segment, so no one can complain that their segment effort, because I was really worried that it would like start like two meters in front of the segment, and I'd be like, well, I want my segment, uh, but there was no worries. So you can see here again, I'm just like trying to get out the saddle, just trying to give it some beans, but the beans were just not getting given, and uh, yeah, that was, that was the moral of the story at the end, like, I was cooked. Um, for the doy step segment, I probably could have got a bit harder, but this part here, I was like, it's only another maybe kilometer, but it was just like real hard, and I was just dying here, um, and just trying to hold numbs, and I think Paul comes around soon, he's like, come on mate, what are you doing, and I'm like, alright, I'm just going to hold your wheel, and I was just absolutely crying at this point, like, look, look at my watts, I'm going down to 240 watts, it's like, that's, a, that's like zone 2, zone 3, like, come on, up it a little bit, like here, I'm just absolutely cooking, and you can see my cadence is absolutely shocking, 75, 78, and that's when I was just like, come on mate, just up, up the cadence a little bit, up to 95, because there's no excuse, because it's like 9%, 10% gradient. Anyway, Paul comes around here, I had to do a little surge to get on his wheel, and um, Paul is just not even holding that good numbs, but just like, I'm just cooked on the wheel, like, this is me holding like 300 watts, and I'm just like, absolutely gone, it's just like, no response, it's just, yeah. Yeah, it's just, I was like, oh my god, I'm just, I'm just gone, I don't know what's, what's happened. Uh, but luckily, well, luckily I didn't get dropped, um, and I think Paul was, Paul was being nice, uh, to me, he didn't want to just ride off on his own, which he could have done, but I guess, like, he wouldn't have won anyway, so it's a bit confusing, but he was there and said, just help me along, big, big thanks to old Paul, uh, I was pretty happy with the time, I'll be posting all the times and numbers at the end of the, this vid, if you want to have a look at them, on the day, didn't weigh myself, my guess, 60, 61, probably about that, uh, I'm seeming pretty lean around these parts, uh, not carrying too much water, so yeah, probably 60, 61. But oh, without a scale, it's hard to tell. Uh, in terms of water, just had a bottle, half a bottle, like 500 mil, 500 mil bottle, sprayed out most of it. I had a little bit, but yeah, and didn't really want it. When I was like, about, when I was really strong, I was like, all right, time to get rid of this water. Anyway, I just sort of come around here, try and give myself a little bit of a turn, uh, but no turn is given because I am absolutely cooked. So we go around this, around this little corner onto a bit of gravel, gravel slash dirt up here. Uh, final little kick. So if this was actually a race, it would have been quite quite exciting because there would have been a little kick around here. We would have had a good position. Uh, but I mean, every race, pretty much everyone just came in ones and twos. I mean, it's just such a long climb, and I think the disparity in ability is so great that no one can really finish together. Um, so you can see, I give it a little bit of a dig here, get up to 500 watts. Ooh, <laughs> it's pretty exciting. And anyway, around this part, I'm like, all right. I've got it, and I look around to see, realize that Paul's going to give me the win, which is uh, very nice of the man. Uh, and I chuck the arms in the air when I get through this little thing. I think I, my garment's a little bit out of sync, as you can see. Hands in the air, uh, and there we go. First win of my, of, I've, like, ever, really, of, like, a proper race. I've got a couple, like, useless races, but this is my first proper win. So pretty pumped for that. Got some more races on the horizon. Racing in Thailand is going well. One second place, one first place. Very content. Uh, and yeah, my numbers will and everything else will be on the screen after this. Cheers for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Actually, I forgot to forgot to say we had a bit of a vegan domination because Jason then got third in uh, this one, which was good. Uh, and then Tori won her race, first ever road race, and Tori won it. So, vegan domination, fastest male, fastest female, completed it.